the nation's favourite antiques experts. I just love it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. It's fast. It's a race. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Could be tricky. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. High five. There will be worthy winners. Mind blowing. And valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Or the slow road to disaster? Oh no. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. Oh yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I spy our dinky 1979 MG Midget and its passengers. The delightful duet of auctioneers Christina Trevanian and Tim Medhurst. They're up with the lark and trilling with the dawn chorus. Good morning, good morning. It's great, great to stay, stay up late. late. No, that's the wrong oh, one, isn't it? Wrong. <laughs> and a good morning to you. Where are we? Somerset. Are we? Somerset? Somerset? Are we not in Devon? No. Oh. Maybe we're on the Somerset-Devon border. Oh. I like it here. The geographically challenged ones are touring the B roads of Somerset and Devon before heading north to Worcestershire and into Wales for a final auction in Cardiff. Those daffodils out. Oh, lovely. We don't have any of those around our estate anymore. Oh, oh. <laughs> one doesn't have one round the estate, does not one? <laughs> one does not. His Lordship sallied forth with £200, but was under siege at the last auction and starts today with £165.10. Whilst her Ladyship also began with the same sum and after laying a golden egg, she currently rules the roost with a pocket full of £635.84p. Time to fatten up our new man now with a cream tea, perhaps. A friend of mine has lemon curd and cream on their scones. What? Which I've never had before. No, that's mine. just wrong. It's that's a bit like wrong. me and my golden syrup and cheese sandwich. I don't know why you do that. Toasted sandwich. Really? Delicious. Cheese and golden syrup? Toasty. Yuck. This time, Tim and Christina are meandering in the southwest before their auction in Exmouth. And first destination for both today is Carhampton. Okay, I can see rain on the windscreen. If uh, I feel rain on my face, we're going to get this lit up, okay? Oh, okay. Although I can see some coming. I think you're being overly dramatic. Me? <laughs> Never! <laughs> well, <laughs> let's hope it's quite a performance than at Chrissy's Crackers. This looks fantastic. It does look oh, good. look at that car. Well, you can afford it. <laughs> yeah, I probably could. Should I ask them how much they want for it? Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> this is one huge shop of every form of antique and architectural salvage. Oh, do you think we should be led by the cat? I think so. Lead me to the prophet. Cat power. <laughs> Lead on, pussy. I'm not entirely sure I like shopping with you. Why not? Because I feel like I'm holding you up. You're <laughs> like a coiled spring, ready to pounce. Well, actually, I'll food. tell you what. what. I've actually seen something anyway. So, so shall I go? Okay, go, I'll go, go. Don't, don't let me yeah. hold you up. Go on, right. go, go. Shoot, 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 shoot. Good luck. And he's off. Right, I'm hoping it's still here. And it is, good. Okay, so what do we have here? just looks like a fence, doesn't it? But really what it is, is a pipe rack. What your gent would do back in the early 20th century, 1920s, is they'd pop their pipes in a rack and then choose the one they wanted to use. For the moment, I don't really want Christina seeing it, to be honest, so I'm gonna hide it and then come back to it later because I'm gonna have a, have a little look around. A wee bit of cloak and dagger, wouldn't you say? Now, Christina seems to have gone walkabout with owner Pete. How much is on your antique site? It's amazing. I bought that off eBay for 60 quid. Seriously? How much have you got on it? I couldn't sell that one. That's, oh, that's, go on. that's, that's part of the building now, isn't it? Would you take 100 quid for it? No. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of hundred pounds wouldn't be out of the way. But what do you fancy that's definitely for sale? Oh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Hey, that's the perfect height for me, giving a lecture. Who could I lecture? My children? Maybe it could be like a recipe book stand. It's clearly come from an old church or a chapel. It's in pitch pine, it's wonderfully carved. Quite like that. I wonder what you'd do with it now. And it hasn't got a price on it. 
It's a bit worrying. I would really need to find Pete. See what his best price could potentially be on that. That's quite cool. It's a very tactile thing, actually. I like that. Meanwhile, is anything speaking to Tim? Oh, this is luscious. I love Georgian furniture, and this just speaks to me of an era where things were, you know, they were quality and it was refined. What have we got? Let's have a look. £725. Sadly, not for me this time. Not on your budget, matey, but how's Mrs Moneybags getting on? Oh, rain, rain. My goodness. Look at this. This is cool. That's very cool. So we've got a chair, sort of mid-century style, really nice label on the back there. It's a shame there's any... Ah, look, there's some more. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, potentially chairs. Those are really funky and they're stackable. Oh, well, there's more. <laughs> I'm going to keep breeding. There's two here. OK, I think we need to brave the rain and ask Pete. He really doesn't want to sell me that antique sign and I really like it. I might have to go and try and see how persuasive I can be. Good luck then. Pete seems like a man who can stand his ground. So, a couple of things on my list. Number one, antique sign. Right. Oh, that face. What was that face? Told you. Mm, you won't find, I won't find another one to put over the door, will I? I'm sure you'll, you know, you, you can, you see them all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do, yeah. All over the place. I've, you'll yeah, find I've one seen, then. <laughs> Ten today. <laughs> I'll have a little think about that one. Is that all right? <laughs> okay. All right, okay. Uh, second on my list is there's like a little lectern. Right. Pitch pine sort of lectern-y yeah. thing. And third, there is stackable chairs, which are quite cool. I mean, they're not cool. They're awful. Yeah. With all the paint flaking off. Exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's the ones. Where did they come from? They come from a local village hall. Oh, there we go. I actually have three tables that go with them. No, you don't. I do. You cheeky little monkey, where? Hidden. Everything is hidden in this place. So it is. Tim's at it too, look. And Carol, who works for Pete, has another secret hideaway. <laughs> Carol, I found you. Hi, Tim. And I found this in your wonderful shop as well. Pipe rack. Yes. A bit quirky. Yeah, a bit of fun. Novelty. We love novelty, don't we? We do. Um, what was your very best price for you on it, do you think? Well, I'm thinking, save me dusting it about a tenner. Can't argue with that. Okay. For a bit of fun, we'll bit take it fun. for a tenner. Oh, Thank do. you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Now, Pete is leading Christina a merry dance to these hidden tables. Oh my gosh, you're as fast as Tim. This is like challenge Annika, keep up. Where? They are really hidden. <laughs> they are really hidden. <laughs> OK. In behind here, there are three of them. Oh my goodness, I can't, I can't, oh, no. OK, all right. Can oh. I help? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Don't do this at home, folks. Just go careful. Oh yeah, look at them, they are cool! Oh, I like those very much. So you've got some folding trestles. OK, so right, money. Money. Talk to me about money. OK. It better be cheap, bearing in mind I can't see what I'm even looking at or I buying. could do you a table yeah. for 45. <sighs> And the chairs could be as cheap as £10 each. No, they're not worth £10 each. Stack of buy chairs? Here's my opening offer. Right. A table. Right. Six chairs. Right. And the lectern. 100 quid. Ooh. What do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm, generous. But that is a table you can't see stuck on the back of a wardrobe. I've never done a deal standing on top of a piece of furniture before. We'll leave her to get down from the furniture then and catch up with Tim, who's ventured 20 miles west along this spectacular Exmoor coastline to the lovely little town of Lynmouth. It's harbour once full of herring fishing boats. The cliffs here rise a sheer 500 feet out of the sea and perched on the top is Lynmouth's sister town, Linton. To get up there, Tim's taking the easy way in a 19th century funicular railway. Hello, afternoon. Could I get a ticket, please? Thank you very much. 862 feet of narrow gauge rail clinging to the Linton Cliff at a gradient of 57%. 
The world's steepest water-powered railway was built in 1888, and at the top, Tim's meeting a man who's worked on it since 1979, Ashley Clark. Prior to 1887, there wasn't a cliff railway linking the two villages. The only way to get between the two villages was up a very steep one in four hill um, by horse and cart. The journey taking everyday supplies to people in Linton was arduous and took a toll on the animals who toiled up and down the punishing path. Victorian engineering had a solution, though. It came about by a group of men getting together, one in particular, George Nunes, who was a London publisher. A very wealthy man, used to hate animals being ill-treated in any way. He was also a philanthropist and he wanted to have an effect on, on people's lives, you know, and make them better. Part of this plan for improvement was to attract tourists to both villages. Engineer George Croydon Marks designed the railway and it took three years to build it into the rock face. Ashley is going to show Tim how the ingenious pulley system of two carriages works. Well, there are two, they hold 700 gallons each mm -hmm. and upon a given signal from the driver, the bottom car will release water, making the top car heavy. The heavy car goes down and pulls the light car at Limith up to Linton. Fantastic. The two carriages between them must use an awful lot of water. <laughs> they do. The company was formed through an Act of Parliament in um, 1888, mm -hmm. which gave us perpetual right to extract 60,000 gallons of water wow. a day. And that water comes by way of pipeline a mile and a half from the Westland River. What I'm going to ask you to do is to press this bell three times. OK. And when we get the bell signal back from the other driver, I want you to wind this wheel up. OK. Excellent. Ready, Tim? Here we go. One, two, three. Now if we can wind the wheel up. OK. So which way am I pulling this? Upwards. Are we completely releasing the brake? It is taking the brakes right off, yeah. There we are. And they're away. It goes quite a speed, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah. It certainly does. It's amazing to have that connection with the past, isn't it? To think that someone did this job 100 years ago, isn't it? That's right, yes. And um, so efficiently. And that's, I think, the, the most exciting thing about it for me is how eco it is. The water we're using, Tim, is totally unpolluted. We take it from the river, we use it to wait this car to go down and pull the light one up and it has returned to the beach at Lynmouth in the same state it was taken from the river. So you could say, actually, that the Victorians were unintentionally eco-friendly at the time? Absolutely, yes. So we're nearing the end now, so is this where you take over? I better had, yeah. OK. So we're coming to a grinding halt. Yeah, well, the main brakes are now coming on, slowing us down until we come to a rest in the station. Touchdown. There we are, Limmouth. It's such fun, we'll leave Tim to go back and enjoy it all over again. <laughs> Meanwhile, Christina's got the car all to herself as she wends her way through quiet country lanes to her next shop in the town of Minehead, which has been attracting holidaymakers since the Victorians rolled their bathing machines onto the beach. Christina has rolled the MG into the car park and it's off downtown on foot. Nice flowers. That reclamation yard played absolute havoc with my feet. And look, girls, you'll understand my pain. I am now walking on metal spikes. So I need to go and get my heels re-tipped because a marathon can only be run with good footwear. She's right, so cobblers to you too. OK, local knowledge is required. Down on the left. OK, is it far? Um, no, two minutes. Thanks ever so All much. Right, cheers. cheers. Bye. This looks like the place. Yes, and he was closing. He's literally closing his shop. And I've just pounced on the poor man. <laughs> well, you can't say the sparks don't fly on this programme, eh? Oof. New shoes cure the blues. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Now, can we get on with some antiques, etc.? That's what the next shop is called. <laughs> and it's presided over by David. Quality antiques here for a woman with over £500 in her posh. So much to see, so much to see. Wow. 
Wow. Gosh, that's extraordinary. So it's Arts Girls 1911 shooting trophy. David, where did this come from? Switzerland. It's fascinating, isn't it? Bern, yes. What have we got on the bottom? See Moser, Bern. Bern, but it just screams sort of secessionist movement and that sort of early 20th century European. Look at that wonderful whiplash handle. That's great, isn't it? It's priced at £150. I like that. What a shame it's cracked. It has a hairline crack in it, yes. Yeah, it does. But still, nonetheless, beautiful. And obviously silver plated because you yes. can see the brass and the copper coming through. But that, it just screams arts and crafts or it secessionist does. or whatever you want to call it. That, that early 20th century period is beautiful. Right, that could <laughs> be an option. I like that very much. Plenty more to see. I mean, this shop is just magical. There are so many little nooks and crannies to look in. Too much to see. Maybe David can help. Is there anything that you've got hidden away? What's your favourite thing in um, the shop? We'll have a nice tea caddy. Oh, okay. Which is um, silver by Liberty and Co. Oh, look at you. Oh, I love it. I mean, that is just so typically Archibald Knox. It is. That great, great man. Very much. The Celtic Enamel designs. on there, yes. yeah. There will be a record book somewhere that will be able to track down this reference number on here. But of course, it wasn't stamped Archibald Knox because Liberty was so protective over his brand, wasn't he? That he That's never, right. apart from, I think, with one exception, Moorcroft, he never let anybody sign their work. That's right. That was then retailed through Liberty. Oh, I dread to ask, how much, how <laughs> much, how much do you want for it? It's on at a mere 450. How is it? Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh God, I hate spending money. <laughs> I really hate spending money. And then there's that, um, the Moser jug. Oh yes, yes. As well, which I quite liked. Yes. I might just go and get that hand sack. I mean, I love this. Could we do 450 for the two and we've got a deal? Ooh, no. <laughs> 480 for the two. I just get very nervous about spending money. <laughs> 480 for the two, we've got a deal. All right, 480. Yeah? 480, we'll do it. Well, that's made her pockets lighter by 80 pounds for the ewer and 400 for the tea caddy. Time for Christina to hot foot it back to the car and collect Tim for a scenic run home. Isn't that lovely? I love these hedges. Yeah, they're so luscious, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they really are. It wouldn't be the same if green wasn't green, would it? What? If trees and bushes and things were blue yeah. and the sky was green, it just wouldn't work, would it? Well, let's leave these and other existential questions until tomorrow, shall we? Nighty night. They're back on the road, and after a full English, they're already looking forward to a Devon cream tea. Jam first or cream first? I would put my cream on top. Why would you do that? Do you not do it that way? No, why oh. would you do that? Um, really? I've always done it. Oh, Tim, I'm not sure we can be friends anymore. Scones at dawn, eh? <laughs> Whatever next. Yesterday, Tim's solitary purchase was a pipe rack, costing a tenner. Lead me to the profit. Cat power. Leaving him £155.10 in his piggy. While Christina, protesting her parsimoniousness... Oh, God, I hate spending money. ..but threw hundreds of pounds at a Liberty tea caddy, a secessionist ewer, a lectern and a vintage table and chairs. So she has but £55 and 84 pennies left. And there go all my defences And in a little You've actually got quite a good singing voice. <laughs> you have. I like it. And here I go yeah, there she goes. <laughs> and after dropping Christina off, Tim's making his way this morning to the Devon town of Cullumpton, or Cully to the locals. He's got some serious buying to do today, and where better to start than at Cullumpton Antiques. And he looks like a man on a mission. This is an amazing shop. There's five rooms packed with brilliant things and I need to get ferreting around. Oh, get stuffed, will you? <laughs> well, 
wake me up when you find something, eh? What have we got here? Well, we have a solid pine chair. It's not any old chair, though. This once belonged in a church in the 19th century. And you just imagine who sat in this in a church. Let's see, it's pretty uncomfortable. I'm not enjoying the, the comfort, but... It just has a really good look to it. And on the back, you've got what looks like the original red paint in the decoration, the carved um, symbol at the back here. Now, it's priced up at £120. Now, that is a large amount of money considering my budget. Um, but I think at auction, this might have legs, so I'm willing to risk on this. And it's something I'd buy for myself. I love it. So I think I'm going to take it and see what the very best price is. Well, pick up thy chair and walk, Lazarus. Oof. Didn't see that there. <laughs> Chip a bit of paint while you go. Are we nearly there yet, Mum? Richard, I have found this wonderful chair. Uh-huh, yeah. What do you think about it? Do you like it? I think it's absolutely great. It's got yeah. that just lovely Gothic style yeah, to it. Has. It's got a price tick of £120. I'm not going to haggle, but please tell me your very best price and it'll either be... Yes, I can go for it or not. How would £75 sound? Oh, that's a really generous reduction. So I'm going to say yes. Thank you very much. Very and welcome. I ought to give you some cash. Excellent. And again, I say, pick up thy chair. And have a snooze while you figure out how to get it into the midget. <laughs> Time to follow Christina a few miles northwest now to the town of Tiverton, a prosperous wool trading centre until the 18th century. But in 1815, wool was in serious decline and the fortunes of Tiverton were on a downward spiral. The race to get mechanisation was creating huge upheavals and at Tiverton Museum, curator Pepper Griffith is on hand to tell Christina how, out of this industrial crucible, one man came to leave a permanent mark on the town. Oh, look at all this. Gosh, it looks like our barn at home. <laughs> It must have been an incredibly exciting time within the industry. Absolutely. So the first factories were really springing up in the Midlands uh, to house the new machinery that was being built. And of course, merchants were wanting to develop uh, more complex fabrics with the Holy Grail being lace. So it took a long time to make by hand. And that's the reason why it had been a really expensive fabric. Originally, only the very wealthy people could afford to have lace. You can tell it's handmade because it's all ever so slightly irregular, isn't it? There's no two pieces the same, no two panels. How on earth would you then start to make that in a factory, having had a little pin cushion and all those little bobbins? How would that happen? Well, that's a very good question and one that really taxed a lot of inventors yeah. in the 1800s. Yeah. Step into the frame, one John Heathcote, a Derbyshire inventor and entrepreneur who had, in 1809, patented just such a machine for producing lace which came to be known as bobbinet. It's just so fine. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So he would have made the net and then they would have gone and then embroidered over the top of this. Yes, first of all by hand, but then of course later on as machinery developed with machines. Yes. And you can really see the hexagons. Yeah in the background Like a honeycomb, isn't it? Yes. Delicious. Heathcote's factory in Loughborough was attacked by Luddites who destroyed weaving machinery in protest against the loss of skills and employment. He moved his business to Tiverton and 500 of his workers, men, women and children, walked the 200 miles here to a new life, creating a community and a business which continues to this day. Bert began here as a 15-year-old in 1950. Clatter, clatter, clatter of the carriages. You had the point bar swooping down. Yeah. Everything down here is. You wouldn't turning. want to get your fingers stuck in it, would no. you? You kept your hands away from this. Yeah. That was the most important part. What was daily life at the factory like? What time did you start? You could do six till six. We six in the morning six till the six morning. at night? It was a 58 hour week. I did 49 years. Mm. You got in there and, yeah. You good career. It was a good career, yeah. yes. Heathcote was a philanthropic employer who on arrival in Tiverton set about creating a community around his mill. Bernard is another long-serving employee. 
My father joined the company in 1913. He was only 12 mm -hmm. and retired on his 65th birthday. And I came much later, 1951, mm -hmm. and I managed 49 years. I was born in one of the houses that Heathcote took on when he came here. Gosh. He acquired other properties, but also built a large number of terrace houses around in this area. John Heathcote also had a high regard for education. They were very keen that all his employees should be able to read and write. And if they couldn't read or write properly, then they worked during the daytime in the factory, but in the evenings were expected to come to the school to be able to learn to, to read and write. Gosh, so not only was he a great philanthropist, he was also a bit of a taskmaster. Well, I suppose he was in a sense, but he felt this was for the benefit of his employees outside of working hours as well. Mm. The social and economic future of the town basically depended on what happened here. Mm. So a very important local figure. He and his family really did make a very big impact on the town and really helped that sense of community. Heathcote's machines made lace worn by royals from Queen Victoria to Princess Diana. MP for Tiverton for 27 years when he died in 1861, black cloth was laid along the streets as a mark of respect. Talking of respect, Tim is rising manfully to the challenge of a limited budget. You can buy antiques for relatively small money. I mean, you just have to hunt for them, and that's part of all the fun. Keep on believing. Tim's headed now to Exeter, and his last hunting ground today is Exeter's antique centre on the quay. Right, Tim, your time starts now. These are just charming novelty pair of miniature brass bellows. What I'd love this to be is a powder flask. In the 19th century, powder was still used in guns for hunting or weaponry. And if you unscrew this, it actually is hollow. And I just wonder if that was filled with powder and you used it to powder your gun. Who knows? But that's the joy with antiques, you see. Some things just baffle you. 23 pounds. It's not too bad, is it? Anything else in the firing line? A little pipe. Perfect for my pipe rack. This is in the shape of the general in command of the armed forces in South Africa in the late Boer War period, General Buller. And he also was awarded the Victoria Cross, which is the highest gallantry award that you can get. General Buller died in 1908, I believe, and this may have been made at that time as a sort of memorial of when he died, or it would, could have been made while he was general during the Boer War. It's open to speculation. It could be late Victorian period or it could be late Edwardian period. I'll put it back on the shelf and come back to it later on. I'll have a little think. While Tim is cogitating, Christina is hoofing it and her new heels to her last shop of the day in the village of Eel. Fagin's is a large warehouse of antiques and salvage in an old cider factory. So clearly, this I mean, it's a really eccentric shop, isn't it? You've got luggage, you've got shop fittings, you've got mannequins. A bit spooky, you feel like they're going to kind of come alive at night, don't they? But that is quite magnificent. Look at that! And so rare to find such a complete bank of drawers. Really rare. It looks like it's mahogany on the front. But it just really kind of conjures up a time when we were still doing venison by the four humours and it was very much, you know, you bled or you had all these humours in your body that you had to balance to become healthy. I just think it's fantastic. Oh, look! Skins! Ooh. Oh, candles. OK. Oh, I like this one. Various. <laughs> I dread to think what price tag is on this. It's going to be an awful lot more than my £55, I think. And 84 pence. While she sniffs out a bargain, <laughs> is Tim any closer to making a dent in his £80? And 10 pence. Hidden away there for me. Can't believe I didn't see that. 
This is a an early 19th century or mid 19th century silver snuff box, um, and it's a French one. And on here is some lovely decoration, very fine little lines, and inside we've got the, the French hallmarks as well. So just a nice little 19th century silver box. Looking at the price, we have £19. It's not a lot of money for a bit of 200-year-old silver, is it? 200 years ago that was made, roughly, and now it's sitting on the side in a little shop in Exeter. I just love that. And I've got the opportunity to buy it for £19, which I'm going to do. Atta boy. Patsy, I found three items. I've gone through okay. pretty much every cabinet, I think, <laughs> in this lovely shop. Uh -huh. The first thing was this silver continental box, yep. um, and it was priced up at 19, so yep. I won't haggle. I'll just take okay, that. Fair enough. Um, the second one were these uh, pair of bellows. What do you think your very best price is? I think it's priced up at 23 pounds, isn't it? Yes, they could be 20. Fantastic, thank you. That's really good. And the pipe here with General Buller on the front. Mm -hmm. That was the third thing I found, yep. and that's priced up at 29. What do you think your very best on that would be? He could be 25. 25. Very generous, thank you. Perfect. I'll take the three if that's all right. Okay. £64, thank you. Meanwhile, what's Christina's story back at Fagin's? Oh! Oh! I needed that. Come on, old girl, shake a leg. We haven't got all day. Now this is what we commonly know as an Asuet shawl. They're usually Egyptian, probably dates to, to the early 1920s. After the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in the early 1920s, the fascination with anything Egyptian, especially in Britain, was it was almost at fever pitch. Obviously, Henry Carter discovered Tutankhamun's tomb. And I would suggest that if that is priced at under 50 pounds, which I very much doubt that it is, then I think I'm gonna have that. Looks like a belly dancer's outfit to me. Time to talk to Chris. Chris, tell me, what have you got out of interest? I know I won't be able to afford it, but what have you got on that amazing bank of pharmacy? I've just sold that. Oh, have you? Yeah. What have you sold it for? Um, eight and a half thousand. Really? You'd need to do 42 and a half road trips to pay for that. <laughs> what have you got on your shawl? It's nice, though. It's all hand-stitched. You know that. So it's £3,722. Uh, oh, is it? OK, but I better go put it back. 15 quid. £15? Pounds? It's a snip. I will have it now. Thank you very much. That was easy. It was, it? wasn't it? <laughs> if only it was always that simple. We hey. could eat tonight, Lua. Yay. We can eat. <laughs> Win a lot all round. <laughs> anyway, Tim's on his way, so let's call it a day. This is it, Timothy! Oh! <laughs> we're off to... Do you know where we're going? Exmo. Oh, I've got a little bit of a fact about Exmo for you. In 1970... Wow me. Yes? ..somebody found some Byzantine coins on Exmo Beach. Should we go down there for a hunt? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'll be having my green tea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go and search <laughs> for some Byzantine coins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see who's in the money after some chateau. Who's up for a trip to the seaside, eh? We're off to Exmouth, where there's probably no time for Tim to go digging on the beach for ancient coins, at least not until after the auction, which is hosted today by Piers Motley. And the tables are groaning with all manner of things. Tim spent almost every bean he had, £149, on his five lots. Brave. History doesn't really remember Fuller very kindly, unfortunately. I think there's a wonderful quote that says that he was an admirable captain, an adequate major, a barely satisfactory colonel and a disastrous general. Whether these will turn out to be admirable purchases or disastrous purchases, time will tell. Indeed it will. And Christina parted with £595 on her five lots. Doubly brave. Look what Christina has found. What an absolute beauty. I think this really shows the wealth of Christina at this point of the competition. I wish I'd had the money to buy this. I don't think my budget would have stretched to it, but she's done so well finding this. What a thing. I absolutely love it, and I reckon all the buyers will as well. Our auctioneer today is Piers Motley Nash, presiding over bidding in the room and online. And the first thing I thought was, wow, what a find. Usually these things don't sort of turn up. As soon as it came on, we got it online, and it's actually the third highest thing we have had in the sale viewed online. So we've got this little silver snuff box. It's early 19th century. It's got some engine turning in there, and it's a pretty little piece, and the sort of thing which people do collect in silver still these days. 
time to get the sale underway. Are you sitting comfortably? Oh, <laughs> oh. oh I could sink into this. Yeah, Nothing comfortable. Snug? Good. Then we'll begin. And the Liberty Silver Tea Caddy by Archibald Knox is first. I can't look. £330 I have, £340 now, £350 I have, and it was from £350. £360 easy life, £370 I have, £380 I have, £390 I have, £400 with you. It's the internet against internet. £400 I have, £410 I have, £420 with you. Yep, £420 I have, £430 yes. with you. Last chance if you wish to bid again. I'll be selling if there are no other bids. It's Thank you. It's the lady in the room. Now in the room, £440 with you. £440 I have, £450, £460. £460 I have, £470, £480. Keep going, lady in the room. <laughs> 480 I have, 490. 500, not at 500, 490 in the room. Any of us from 490 pounds. Last chance if you wish to bid again. All done at 490 pounds then. <laughs> oh, do you know what? So I was actually quite nervous. A little bit of this <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> 90 pounds to you, ma'am. Thank you. And oh, six, right, okay, eight, I can breathe. breathe. <laughs> Tim's brass powder flask is the next lot. Let's just hope it doesn't sell below what you paid for it. Hey, I do the jokes. At ten pounds, at ten I've been offered. Ten pounds I have in the room. Come Any on. of us on ten pounds? Oh, that's yeah. cheap. Any of us on ten pounds? At fifteen, twenty, and five, thirty, and five. Not at thirty-five. Come Thank on. you. Thirty One pounds more. on the floor. Any of us on thirty pounds? Last chance of you wish to bid again. All done. Selling at thirty pounds. Then. Well done. Seven, six, three. Thank I'm you. pleased. Are you? You don't look very pleased. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> Well, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. They didn't set the world on fire. <laughs> oh, shush, Christina, shush. Now it's her stunning secessionist cracked ewer. At £60, pounds, then. Such at £60, pounds, 60 I've been offered in the room. Any of us on £60? Pounds? I will sell it that at the no other bids. Well, that seems very reasonable to me. 65 now, 70 I have on the internet, 75 with you. Oh, there we go, they've woken up. 75? <laughs> 80 with you, internet. Last chance if you wish to bid again. All done. 80 now and five. He's working the room. 80, five? Oh. No. 80 pounds I have. Last chance if you wish to bid again. All done. Setting at 80 pounds. Oh, it's not my day, oh. Timothy. It's not my day. No, no profit to be had there, girl. This is why I should not be given money to spend. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't. invest it very unwisely. <laughs> Tim's pipe of General Buller. Is on parade next. Fifteen pounds I have. Twenty pounds I have on Easy Life. We're going. Here we go. Here we go. Twenty pounds I have. Any of us on twenty pounds? And here we start. Oh, <laughs> it was a good start. Twenty-five now in the room. Thirty with you. Twenty-five pounds in the room. Thirty now. Thirty-five. Last chance if you wish to bid again. All done, ladies and gentlemen. Selling. That's still a profit. Thirty pounds then. Hey. Easy life. A profit, a profit, you. sweetheart. You have not, not made one loss yet. Yes, a small victory for the old war horse. <laughs> it feels good. Relief. <laughs> good. Now it's the turn for Christina's pitch pine lectern. Any interest at £35? Nope. £35 I've been offered. £40 with you. £35 I have really? on Easy Life. Any of us on £35? Pounds? What? <laughs> Any of us on £35? Are we all done then? I'll sell it that at another bid. So all done at £35 then. Oh, so bad. Oh, it was a little bit painful. It was about like ripping off a plaster. <laughs> That's cost her a fiver. Here endeth that lesson. Oh, oh, you. Oh, I think I slightly got out of jail there. Yeah, mm. only just. How will Tim's pipe rack in the form of a gate do next? Who'll start me off? Let's hit £15 on this then, please. At £15 I have from the Netherlands, Excellent. by the looks of it. a good start. £15 I have. Yeah. Any of us from £15? Oh, we can't stop Any of us from £15? That was short and sweet, wasn't it? At yeah. 20 yes. I have in the room. Oh, 25 anywhere. Yes. 25 I have now, 30 with you. 25 you I have. You put your pipe in it, madam. Not at 30, 25 I have. Last chance if you wish to bid again. One more. Selling at 25 pounds then. Oh, there we are. Well done. Oh, I'm pleased, 15 pounds. More than double your money. Yep, 15 pounds in his pocket. If you carry on doing this, I'm in trouble. Right. Right. Had a bit of a streak. Under the hammer now, Christina's Egyptian Assuit shawl. 200 pounds, yeah. 15 Aim high, Christina. <laughs> At 15, I have 20 with you now. Sarah, 25 with you. creep up to that profit. £40 pound mark. 25, I have. Oh, 30 with you, Sarah. 30, I have. Come on. No, £30 pounds I have, and it wasn't oh. £30. Pounds. Last chance of you. Wish it again. Gosh, Look like cheap. a bride in this one. Yeah. Selling at £30, pounds, then. Doubling your money again. I'm not complaining. 
Yes, fifteen pounds due this time. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take that and Very run. Good. Well done. <laughs> Tim's pine gothic chair is up next. Incredibly uncomfortable. At twenty-five pounds to start me then. Oh, we've got thirty-five. 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 I've now been offered. Thirty-five. I have. Oh no. Forty with you. Okay. It's okay. Thirty-five pounds on easy it's line. Not. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's not. Are we all done? Oh, the last no. bit. The last, oh, bit. Sad last time. chance then, please. All done. Selling at thirty-five pounds then. Ouch. That's less than half of what it cost him. Ouch indeed. It's um, okay. Don't yeah. cry. Don't cry. Maybe Christina's uncomfortable chairs will make her cry next. They're up now, with the table still tucked away. Twenty-five pounds. I have any of us from twenty-five pounds. Thirty now. <gasps> There's bits. Any of us from thirty-five? Wow, there are two and people 35 in the room. In the world. Forty with you. Forty. I have and five. Fifty internet and five. Not at fifty-five. Fifty pounds it's on not the internet. Any of us from fifty pounds? Any of us from fifty pounds? Are we all done? Selling at fifty pounds. Oh, okay. yeah. You win some, you lose some. They were nice, though. <laughs> well, <I'm not> <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> Tim's last lot now, that French silver snuff box. Do you like my little Four snuff box? I, I love it. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Let's say at £25 on this thing. Easy. Easy. Straight in at 25 25 I have in the room. Any of us on £25? Come on. Any of us on £25? 30 with you? Any of us on £25? We'll be selling a new bit of 30 and 5, 40. And five, fifty. Not at fifty, thank you. Forty-five in the room. Any of us on forty-five pounds? All done, ladies and gentlemen. Forty-five. Well Selling. done. At forty-five pounds, then. See, you do know what you're doing. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> of course he does. He's more than doubled his money. If I haven't plateaued, I have definitely gone backwards. I would be very happy to have plateaued in this auction. Mm, I think I've definitely plateaued or gone backwards. OK, well, in which case we need to get on and up. Definitely. OK? Yeah. Come on, Let's that's go the instruction. I'm excited. Right, where's me calculator? Tim's peaks and troughs today mean that, after auction costs, he lost £13.70p and is stranded on that plateau with £151.40. Christina, meanwhile, tried to scale the dizzy heights again, but, after sale room fees, slid backwards by just over £33, yet clings on to her lead with £602.54p. Well done. Ah. Oh. Oh. Never mind. My wizard's cape didn't work much magic <laughs> for me today, did Ups it? Ups and downs of auction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, look, we can go to the pub and watch the rest of the auction. Can we? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's go and drown our <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs>